Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart is signing black in again. Asking you to hit that share button. Thank you if you hit like or subscribe, but the share button is really important. That's where it's at. Um, this is uh, an answer to a question uh, asked by letters to my people. And uh, he, the, the YouTuber letters to my people. And he's asked about SYSBM, and he's done it in a very even-handed way. Not sarcastically and derisively that I've heard. One question that you asked, sir, uh, was uh, why African-American women would care about the men they don't even want getting passports and bouncing. And uh, why even more strangely african-american men who they do want would care about them uh getting passports and bouncing out and i attempted to answer that in writing uh in the comments section there was one thing i failed to mention though because you can only type so much and that is that sysbm men are actually a combination of the men that african-american women uh didn't want at all Accommodation uh, and uh, the, the men that uh, the women wanted, and the men that went through both, like me. Sometimes in some geographical locations, I was what they wanted, and others I wasn't. Usually, it had to do with how violent I was with other men. So, um, and then even the men that the women may have wanted but would have been too ashamed. To show they wanted. That had also been me. But it's a combination of different men. However what a lot of them came to understand. Was that even when they were the ones. That the women wanted. Eventually the women would treat them. Like they don't want them. Um, these were. Different sorts of men. Now, the men that no women have ever wanted, uh, you could call incel, but then these guys, well, I mean, even if they were, of course, they get passports, go to other countries, and they were treated like other men. Sometimes wanted, sometimes not, but not always unwanted. So, um, that's one thing I didn't mention there. It's a combination now. I mean, these were men, including men who were wanted in the West, but they were still treated better abroad. And there have been some guys um, who have said, if you can't get it popping at home, you can't get it popping abroad. I beg to differ. It depends on where you go. I mean, you can go to conservative areas. You can go to very liberal areas. It really just seems to depend. Now, I, uh, I myself uh, went to a very conservative region of the world. But I got options. Now, families may not approve of my options in the town I live in, but if I were to go to larger cities in the peninsula, I got options. With and without the family's approvals, I got options. They're, they're marriage options, but that's fine anyway, because as a Muslim, I myself don't believe in fornication, but I do believe in marriage and polygyny. And there is a proverb actually in Arabic, and it is "alij um, anisa bin nisa," meaning treat women with other women. Now, sometimes the proverb is "la tedraba nisa mal kabda, ulakin ma al marathania." That means uh, don't beat the woman with your fist, but with another woman. That's a proverb here too. That's also a proverb in South Africa in the petty language. I promote polygyny. I don't have the money to practice it, but um, then again, I don't have to beat my current wife with another wife anyway. So I'm lucky, but a lot of men around the world have to have the option of the second, third, and fourth wife in order for the first one to not act a goddamn fool. 
At the very least, these women do understand if they act a fool, they will drive their man into the arms of another woman and it will be legal. They understand that here. Be a bitch if you got to, if you want to. Before he divorces you, he will marry another woman. You will share him before you get your divorce papers. He's going to marry and stick his dick in another woman before you get your divorce papers. Guaranteed. They know this. So you have to hold this jealousy against them in many cases. And that's because, yeah, the nature is the same a lot of times. But they're not socialized to just despise men, especially uh, men who treat them well. So to answer your question, what wound up happening um, is that SYSBM attracted multiple types of men. Um, those who had succeeded with women, those who had failed, and, and most of them having had some combination of success and failure, like me. But your second question actually is very important. Why are SYSBM men still talking about this and here's why. One, it's relatively new. Secondly, when SYSBM men um, got started, there was no hashtag SYSBM or an acronym. There were just black men who had traveled abroad for different reasons and found out that women treat you better on average when you get out the West. There, were just, there was that, that's all. Now, when it comes down to that, this is what's funny about it. When it comes down to that, the men simply began to tell other men first. But they told from other men on the internet, through social media, through channels uh, in, uh, in which other people that you weren't talking to could see what you're saying. African American women saw these bits of information, these uh, notes of advice, and they automatically assumed that black men were talking about leaving to get non-black women. They assumed that the comparison was racial, not national. That was the mistake. That was the error. So they reacted. And what we're doing is we're merely addressing their reactions in many cases. But when they reacted, you got the gynocrat goons and the matriarchal mandingos. Some of them who really do have good intentions. They just, they love black women and they don't want black women to get the crap end of the stick. I don't want that to be the case. But they assume that we did not love black women either when in fact most of us love black women. But we can't be with the black western woman. The wicked witch of the west. I can't be with a Western woman, period, white, black, or anything else. If she's Italian, but she's from a village where they, they spoil their men as long as the men are responsible, and she moves to the U.S. within the first year, I can't be with her. Granted, there's also the thing about Italians being white, too. I don't mess with white women. But... Um, what I'm getting at is that you can take someone from anywhere, put her in the U.S., and when she takes on that lifestyle, I'm done. Absolutely. So, we're reacting largely to that, but right now, sir, the discussion is actually not so much between us and the women. It's more so, I should say the argument is more so between us and the gynocrat goons and the matriarchal mandingos, these men that go hard in the paint. Because what they're saying is, even though we're just answering the questions or answering uh, the reaction of the sisters to us doing this, they're saying, well, if you're going to leave, just leave, but don't talk about it. Don't, don't make so much noise on your way out. And what I'm saying, not other SYSBM men, what I am saying is, no, leave on your way out. Not because you're going to change the current generation of grown sisters, but leave on your way out so that the younger sisters, the ones that are still minors, can hear why you're leaving and they can decide for themselves if they're going to repeat their mama's mistake or avoid it. You see, sometimes you got to do things in order to send a message to the younger generation 
so they can avoid the mistake. And I'm saying do that. I'm saying leave and make all the noise on your way out so that you can tell the young brothers that ain't even 18 yet what the options are if the women their age do choose to go the same route as their mamas. I'm going to give an example. When my um, American ex acted up, which was for a long time, um, I just quit talking to her. And I started looking for a second wife when I left the United States. I didn't look for a divorce first. I looked for a second wife. Found someone I was uh, considering marrying. Then I woke up one morning. There was an email from uh, my American wife at the time, now my ex. Since we're not communicating as a couple, uh, let's talk about a divorce. I said, yeah. I'll tell you some news when I get to the when I get back to the states to visit. I went back to the states following summer to visit my parents, my sibling, my children. And of course I saw her. When she wanted to talk about the divorce, I said, "Sign a paper that gives me permission in another country to marry a second wife." What? Yes, you heard me. I don't owe you that. Yeah, you do. I'll sign what you want when you sign what I want. And you will not get your divorce until I have married and stuck it in her. Now, I let my daughters hear me say this. I didn't do this to hurt my daughters. I didn't do it out of vengeance, I didn't do it to hurt my ex. I did it because I knew that my daughter, since they live with their mother, and at that age they should have, could pick up the wrong idea from their mother. So I made, and I let my son know about this. The reason was so that the message was sent to them, my daughters. If you do what your mother did, you're going to drive your man away. And the message, I, I let my son know about the conversation later on. And that was so that my son would understand. If these, if this generation, your generation of women is going to act like they mamas do. You make sure that you send a message to them. You ain't going to tolerate it. And you're going to bounce. And you're going to stick it in somebody else. In other words, you make them know that they're going to drive you away. They're not going to get what they want out of you. They're going to drive you the hell away into the arms of women that ain't going to act like this. And those women are out there. That was why I did it. And the funny thing is, even though my daughters were too young, really, they still had to hear it, unfortunately, for this reason. Now, my daughters know feminism is crap. Women's rights is not crap. Equal treatment under the law and, and for work opportunities is not crap. Justice is not wrong, but feminism, the third, especially the third wave, the radical, that militant feminism, they know that's wrong. They know there's no such thing as man spreading and that is not to be punished. They know all of these things. They know that these, they know that their generation of girls is raised with that BS. They know that. And they know that these girls are driving them in a way. My younger daughter's kind of too young to fully understand it, but my older daughter knows it. She gets it. And she's like, I'm not going to mistreat a man that treats me well. And if he ain't my type, then he just ain't my type. But I'm not going to mistreat him. I just ain't going to be with him. I'm not going to marry him. But I'm not walking around here starting stuff with men because they're another gender. I'm not walking around here angry with men because they're men. And my son, well, I mean, his eyes are wide open. He's red-pilled at this point. He doesn't know the acronym SYSBM only because I didn't tell him. But he's on that. He's going to find it himself. Then he's going to find out that his dad is Blackheart. He's going to find Blackheart's uh, vids one day, hear the voice and realize, holy cuss word, that's my dad. That's what's going to wind up happening. 
And he's going to understand, okay, well, I know my dad doesn't hate women. He doesn't hate black women. So what gives? He's going to realize how much he and I already agree. He's told me what he knows, and I have not explained to him how much we already agree. He came to a lot of this understanding on his own. But I'm sorry, I'm taking a long time to tell you that the answer to the question um, is actually the same as the answer to the first question. In a nutshell, um, we're answering them. And I don't know how long it's going to last, but I, it's not really other SYSBM men that are as militant. I am the one that says, let's not stop there, let's make more noise, and let's make the younger generation know what's going on. Let's make these young folks know, look, she drove us away. We ain't drive her away. She asked for us, she demanded that we be Superman and she just remained Lois Lane and pass up Wonder Woman for her. She demanded that we do and have and be so much for her to bring absolutely no reason or incentive for it. She demanded this from men that had a sense of responsibility and morals and then turned around and did not demand the same thing from men that did not have the same sense of responsibility and morals and screwed them for free, cheating on the others, even while married. She had a twin mating strategy and that was as dis it was disrespectful and a slap in the face to any man. She wanted your biological dad to not have to do anything. And she wanted your stepdad to think that he was your biological dad. That's the truth. So that your stepdad with a sense of responsibility and some stability would provide this for you. But she thought that he was genetically inferior because he was stable and had a sense of responsibility. So she assumed his inferiority as a man for specifically the same reasons that she wanted him to be your stepdad. Thinking he's your dad. The same things she wanted him to provide you were the reasons she thought he's inferior. I'm the one that wants that message to continue to be sent again and again and again until the next generation not only is aware of this, but until their mothers are pulling their hair out because they can't stand the fact that we're telling their kids this without their permission. I'm militant about this. Because what they want is insulting as hell. They can't say that it's nothing personal. It, it's, it's personally insulting. They have a, a contempt for... Um, they have a contempt for average normal men because they're not attracted to average normal men. So instead of just being neutral about them, they have a contempt for them. I'll never forget that man whose last name was Morgan who got attacked in that uh, bagel um, last spring or summer because of his height. Um, I'll never forget that. Because he had every right to be angry. At least after the guy picked him up and body slammed him. And then to make matters worse, I saw on the video the way that the women were laughing with their backs turned to him. Because to them it was funny that this guy had been wronged and was angry. What this showed to me was that there was a contempt. It wasn't just a neutrality. There was no shock. They weren't just nervous because there was an angry man around. No, they thought it was funny that this man who was short was so angry. It was entertaining to them. That's what happened. Now we see this and we say, okay, so there is actually a contempt. So what this means is that when you come to us for all the non-sexual favors, after you screwed someone else for free, it's not because... You respect us morally and that's why you treat us better, why you treat us actually worse or you ask more from us. No, it's because actually you have a bit of a contempt for us. 
So you feel like, hey, I'll use this nigga. He's my play brother. That's what I tell him. But in fact, actually, I'm using this dude because he's good for other things. But I don't want to screw him. That's what it is. It's an insufficient respect for the guys they want to screw. And a contempt and a disrespect, though veiled, for the guys they don't want to screw. And they don't even hide their hatred of men they don't want to screw, but who will not and cannot provide them even with non-sexual favors. They're not neutral about the men who do not help or harm them. They hate them. They hate the so-called stereotypical incel that dwells in the basement of his parents. Not because he did something wrong to them. They hate him because not only do they not want to screw him, but he will not do anything else for them. He's out of their way. How dare he be out of their way because he's supposed to be out here laboring to keep everything going. And this is why not only are the men uh, engaging, but why I'm insisting that they be more militant and alert the youth. And I'm talking under 18 to what's going on, not just um, even though the mothers will not approve, but specifically because the mothers will not approve. And I'm not saying it out of hatred. I'm saying it out of a need for the youth to know what the scenario really is because their own mothers will lie to them. Especially the boys. I hope that what I've said answers the question. Hopefully so, and I'm glad that you asked. Um... I hope that what I've said will not be true one day in the future. But until the point is no longer true, I hope that it's a benefit. Asalaamu Alaikum to my audience. Black heart sign and black out. Black male power.